Let me just, right, I'm just gonna quickly tell you guys that you'll like me over half an hour. And I just thought, I don't mind chatting with you guys while I do a walk. Lorna, hi Lorna. Um, so let's just sort of give you a chance to latch on. Um, so this is a phone live, of course. Bobbing away, bobbing away at the bottom of the beautiful shirt. So let's have a look. The time in the UK is around, is it 5.30 p.m.? Um, I wonder what time it is where you guys are around the world. We are beaming around the world with our Defending Elvis Presley YouTube channel. We also defend Lisa Marie and all of the bloodline. We adore Riley Q, Finley and Harper. We miss Lisa Marie tremendously. Of course, we massively admire Elvis. And Benjamin, God rest his soul. We defend his memory. We do it together as Team Elvis. We're a small growing family um, of members and subscribers. So thanks to all you guys that have bought me a coffee. You've hit the... Uh, the coffee button, or the, I think there's another button that's called a supers button. Um, you can send me a coffee direct to my PayPal using my email address. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me when you thank me. Really, honestly, it does. I don't think you know how much it means to me. It's your way of giving me a gold star, giving me a pass on my uh, exam results. So any one of you out there that has bought me a coffee, sent me a couple of dollars for a coffee, uh, Ashley sent me one on the live stream. Thank you so much. So kind of you. Uh, is Ashley on? Anyway, um, and if you become a member, it's a dollar a month. Thank you so much. So, uh, so how is Elaine today? Elaine, Elaine, are you there? Um, Elaine, I just want you to know. Let me just get through this little crowd here. Let's have a look. So Elaine, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Right, tell me if you can hear me because I can restart it. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm not gonna... Yes, you can hear me, good, thank you. Uh, Elaine, um, I just want you to know that when you post on YouTube, I do read every one of your comments. Elaine, can you hear me? I do read all your comments. I really appreciate them. Don't think I, I'm ignoring them. I always try and find them and like them. I don't always reply to them because there's so many. Hi, Valvis. Hi, Rebecca. Um, now, your messages only pop up for about three seconds, so you have to keep them short. Keep them short. Hi, is it Lorna? Hi, Lorna. Now, yeah, Francis doesn't seem to be hearing me, but everyone else is. Maybe it's the storms, the hurricanes. So Ginger can't hear me. Now, Elaine, can you hear me? So Ginger is saying she can't hear me. Listen, I just want to be chilling in Canada. Can you hear me? I want to see who can hear me. I don't want to carry on unless you can hear me, because then I can just restart it. Yeah, so you can. Okay. Right, so the others can hear me, guys. So we're okay. It must be a problem on your end. Right. Now, who watched my live stream uh, just now when I read out chapter 14 and 15 of Elvis and Me? Chapter 14 and 15 of Elvis and Me. Did any of you watch it? asking now. Yes, Colleen. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it, Colleen? Yes. Did you like it? Me reading. Ah, uh, thank you. Now, did anyone see the troll that jumped in? There was a troll jumped in. Elaine, it's very long. It's two hours. Two hours long. Oh, well done, Francis. Did anyone hit see the troll that jumped in? They, they had a picture of me and they said, yes, and they said, um, why do you keep saying the same things over and over again? 
Yeah? Yeah, Stacy saw it. Rebecca saw it. Quite clever. Yeah, they take a picture of... Um, they take a picture of me and then they create a... Create um, an account. And then he, the person posted, why do you keep saying the same things over and over again? And I'm going to answer, I'm answering the troll. I have a good idea who it was, but it doesn't really matter who it was, does it, really? Um, now, I'll tell you why. Because when you break it down, when you break it down, guys, we are saying the same things over and over again. We do say the same things over again. We do keep talking about Priscilla. We do keep talking about the Memphis Mafia. We do keep talking about books that have been written that were unfair. Let me just get past this person. We are repeating ourselves and I'll tell you why. Let me get past this person. Here we go. I'll tell you why we repeat ourselves. Our channel is defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. I can't just do one video defending Elvis Presley and then just hope that the world watches it. We can't do that. We have to keep saying it again and again and again and again. We have to. We have to keep repeating it over and over until it annoys everyone. We have to do it. Let me just go a bit higher. And that's how our message gets heard, by repeating it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep repeating the wrongdoing, in my opinion, of Priscilla. I'm gonna keep repeating the wrongdoing of some of the Memphis Mafia. I'm gonna keep repeating um, when people bring up the Elvis, all the derogatory things they say about Elvis. I'm gonna keep repeating them and defend them. I'm gonna stand loud and proud, and if I have to say it a thousand times, until we get heard, until Team Elvis, defending Elvis Presley, until we get heard, what we're trying to shout as loud as we can from the rooftops, I'm gonna keep saying it. So that troll that managed to get in on our channel the question he asked, or she asked, was, why do you keep repeating the same things over and over again? And I'm telling you now, because we have to. Because we have to. Now, again, right, Elaine, I like your comment. Now, the negative stuff that has been said about Elvis, and now being said also about Lisa Marie, and there's even a build-up now of a bit of anti-Riley Q. Some horrible things are being said about Benjamin. And even Finley and Harper now, have you noticed? There's already a small movement of people that are against them, that are anti-them, that moan about their Instagram posts. Yeah? Have any of you seen it? Have any of you noticed now there's a small growing movement of people that are anti Finley and Harper, anti Riley Q. So yeah, we are gonna defend them. We are gonna defend them. We defend the bloodline. Let me just get past these people. Lots of dogs. One second. Hello, all right. Oh, cute, cute. Cute dogs all around me today. Anyway, so have you guys noticed that even, even Finley and Harper, are they even 16 yet? Does anyone know Finley and Harper's 16th birthday? Don't forget, I'm a twin, so I relate to twins. Even Elvis's grandkids, Lisa Marie's kids, are being bashed by jealous people. They're being insulted daily on air. Now, we've already gone through this, so I'm gonna go through it again. You think about what 
Riley Keough and Finley and Harper have gone through. You think about it, they've lost their mother. The biggest, most horrific thing, the most horrible thing that can happen to a child, especially when they're that age, is losing their mother. The next most horrible thing is losing their brother. You get what I'm saying? You imagine the hell that Riley has been through. Riley Q, who has held her head up high, proud, that beautiful smile that hides everything, hides the hurt. The twins are just getting on with their life. Getting on with their life. They've still got a lot to learn. It's unimaginable what they've been through, but they hold their heads up high with a big smile and they push forward and get on with life. They're very brave. And they may, they may not know we exist, but we hold them in high esteem and we're proud of them. We think they're very brave. We send our love for them and we defend them. Riley and Finley and Harper. We also defend Lisa Marie and Riley Q. Of course, we defend Elvis. We defend them because they need defending. I honestly think that they need defending and the best people to defend the Presley bloodline are the Elvis fans. The Elvis fans, yeah? Do we agree with that? Who's going to defend them better than us? Other than Riley, who's going to defend them? Even with this up-and-coming Oprah interview with Riley. Let's see what comes from that. Will they need us to have their back? Will they need us to have their back? Maybe. Anyway, I'm going to start talking about the Elvis and Me book. So we read chapter 14 and chapter 15. I think we'd actually read 14 before. Now the Elvis and Me book was written in 1985. Now I know I keep saying this and I'm going to say it again. The whole point of the book, Priscilla said, and we played the Terry Wogan interview that shows what the point was, was to, re to set wrongs to right, to set wrongs to right. People have been writing books, unfair books, about Elvis. Priscilla jumps in and says, it's time for me to write my book. I didn't really want to do it, but I'm going to set the record straight. It had nothing to do with money, she said. Now, no one believes that. The book was going to make an absolute fortune. Now, this is my problem. Priscilla Presley had an opportunity, yeah, to write a book that would have lasting effect, that would keep Elvis's memory positive and beautiful and proud. This was her chance to write a book that could really win public affection in the long term if she said all the right things, if she portrayed her ex-husband in a kind way. And everything would be great. Even now, 47 years later, we would be proud of that book. We would be proud of the Elvis and Me book if it had been written properly, told the truth, portrayed Elvis in a good light, showed the good that he did, showed his kind heart, the way that he always put himself last, how he helped thousands of people, helped his own family, friends, he helped strangers. He just wanted to do good. He didn't want to keep the money for himself. He didn't, Elvis didn't hoard the money. He just wanted to give it away. He would carry around pockets of money. The Memphis Mafia would have money that they would just randomly give away when Elvis told them to. 
One of the, I think probably the most generous man that ever lived. I can't think of anyone more generous than Elvis. The amount he gave to charity without any recognition. This man had a heart of gold. He couldn't do enough good. He couldn't. To his last breath. Giving, giving. And people kept taking, taking. And unfortunately, the people that were taking were never grateful, were never thankful. I don't think so. When I look at many of the people that have bad-mouthed Elvis, that have been negative about Elvis and portrayed him in a bad light, many of these people Elvis gave a lot of money to, bought them cars, paid all their bills. Some of them even bought them houses. But they still, for decades, in my opinion, bad-mouthed him for decades. It's such a shame. So today, when I was reading chapter 14 and chapter 15 of Elvis and Me, the book that was written in 1985 to put wrongs to right, and Priscilla had this opportunity to do the right thing, she massively took, in my opinion, Priscilla Presley, Priscilla Bulow, we know that she shouldn't be using the name Presley, but let's call her Priscilla Presley. His divorcee that was unfaithful, that gave him a cruel divorce, hammered him for loads of money, robbed him in my opinion. That opportunity to write that book, is it with Sandra Harmon, the co-writer? Instead of taking it as an opportunity to praise Elvis, she bashed him all the way through that book. There is pages, page by page, of Priscilla painting herself out as a victim that was took advantage of, that was badly treated. All the way through, when I was reading just those two chapters, it was non-stop negative things about Elvis Presley. Non-stop, literally, word after word. He did this, he did that, that happened, this happened. Um, I was controlled, I was told how to dress, how to do my hair, how to do my makeup. Elvis forced me to darken my eye makeup, how to walk, how to talk, even how to hold my head up high. Elvis forced me to wear books on my head so I could walk properly. It goes on and on and then you've got the sexual stuff where she makes it very clear that Elvis had took advantage of her sexually even though for decades she's been saying i never slept with elvis i never slept with elvis yeah you get me guys for decades she's been saying they never slept together but but let me just keep going now do you get my point guys she goes into detail in the book elvis and me sexual detail of things that Elvis did to her that could not be true, that may not be true. We have Priscilla rewriting a book. No, no, rewriting history. Elvis has no involvement with that book. Nothing. He was dead. She was his divorcee. She is not a Presley. She gave up the Presley name after the first divorce settlement. But this book is hammering Elvis, hammering him like now remember the life that Priscilla had. It's like the sun's in my eyes, guys. I don't know if you can see me. You think about the life Priscilla had when she, before she moved to Graceland. Um, I'm not sure which house she was in. Do any of you know which house she was in when she moved to Graceland? I actually don't know. So when she's nearly 18, remember she portrays herself in the book like she was 15 when she moved to Graceland. She wasn't. She was nearly 18. So there are also, in my opinion, many lies in that book. So she portrays herself that when she lived with Elvis, that she struggled. She had no sense of herself, that it was difficult and lonely. And she suffered living in a palace, living in Graceland. She literally moved from a very, very simple, very humble life with her parents. We, we can look up Child Bride, there's a different version of events. She moved to literally Disney World, to a palace. And then when you read the book, 
she talks about moving to Graceland as if it was like a nightmare, a living nightmare. She talks about moving into that celebrity world of Elvis Presley, this amazing world, fantasy world, Disney world. You know, they would rent out fairgrounds and skate parks and theatres, the Memphian Theatre, they would rent out. Every day was a party, but when she talks about it, oh my God, I went through this, I went through that. Life was so tough. I was so unhappy. He forced me how to dress, how to walk, talk, act. He forced me to put books on my head. He took advantage of me sexually. I, I just felt ignored. He was so cruel to me. He had such a bad temper. Yeah. So when I'm reading chapter 14 and chapter 15, and I'm reading it to you guys, the subscribers, the members, the Elvis fans, I'm like, is this serious? Are you serious? Do you know what? At the end of reading chapter 14 and 15, I actually felt a bit tearful. Now, why did I feel a bit tearful? I had a bit of a funny feeling in my stomach. You get it, guys? I lit, honestly, I had a funny feeling in my stomach. It was like, instead of reading a book that was praising Elvis, that was saying nice things about the man I admire, I felt like he'd been, how can I explain it? I felt like I'd been hurt. Now, because I'm very defensive towards Elvis, I take it personally, when people say horrible things about Elvis that I think are not true, I actually get a bit upset, I get hurt. It's like I've been slapped in the face. So at the end of reading chapter 14 and 15 of Elvis and Me, I was like, gutted, gutted. Now why do I feel gutted when, I, when Priscilla Presley wrote this book to put wrongs to right, because other people had written previous books that were unfair to Elvis. So she puts wrongs to right and then makes him look even worse. She takes it as an opportunity to run him down, to put him down, to belittle him, to make him look bizarre, as Barbara Walters says. This bizarre life, yeah? Barbara Walters' interview, go and look it up on YouTube. It just doesn't seem right. And I've still got more chapters to read, haven't I? I've got. I actually don't know how many chapters there are, but I'm on 15, yeah? So is that how it's going to be? That I'm going to read chapter after chapter and get more gutted and more gutted and more upset and more hurt? Why am I reading a book called Elvis and Me? And I'm almost ashamed of the things that she's saying. Now, how has Priscilla managed in my opinion, for the last, since 1985, work it out, how many years is that? For nearly 40 years. Why has this book, why is it still treated as truth? Why was, why was Priscilla allowed to rewrite history for 39 years? Is that how long it's been? How has she got away with it? How? We now know that she's been outed from Graceland's even though no one will publicly say it. No one will publicly say Priscilla officially has been banned from Graceland. Officially has been put outside of the circle of Elvis Presley Enterprises. No one will officially say it. So I have to say it's just my opinion. So why has it taken nearly 40 years for people to realise Priscilla's wrongdoing? I want an apology from Priscilla. Now, I'm not a Priscilla hate channel. I don't hate Priscilla. I want an apology to defend Elvis. I want to defend Elvis with Team Elvis. Now, my point is, guys, this is what I'm trying to say. The public now are starting to see that think something is wrong. I think the first clue that the public got, let me just think, was when there was financial problems with Barry Siegel and Lisa Marie had serious money problems because Barry Siegel had squandered 
a fortune with bad investments like American Idol. Now we know that Elvis Presley Enterprises was sold again. The new owner, Joel Weishanker, who does seem to love Elvis and Lisa. But at the end of the day, the Elvis Presley Enterprises has been passed around. It should belong to the bloodline. Honestly, I really mean that. Now, this is my point, guys. Why was the Priscilla film allowed to be made? Sofia Coppola, why did she allow herself to make a film about lies, in my opinion? A 40-year-old story that she made up. She put wrongs to right. But really, she didn't put wrongs to right. She put wrongs to wrongs. She put wrongs to wrongs. Now this probably is why Elvis Presley Enterprises are upset with her. They didn't want that film made. They knew that Lisa Marie didn't want that film made, that she had written to Sofia Coppola asking her to not make the film. They knew it. We know that Lisa Marie, in our opinion, behind the scenes with Priscilla was arguing almost begging her mother to not make the film Priscilla, Sofia Coppola's film. Clearly, Lisa Marie felt that the film Priscilla, Sofia Coppola's, was going to damage Elvis's reputation and image even more. Even more. Yeah? You get what I'm saying, guys? This is why she's outside of the club. Priscilla isn't in the club anymore. She's outside of the club which is why she's off around the world making money in different ways. Doing personal appearances, signing autographs for money. And if you go onto her Instagram, everything on there is about promotion, about making money. The woman is 80 years old. And everything you see on her Instagram is about the next way to make money. To make money. She's outside of the club. She can't make money at Elvis Presley Enterprises anymore, except for the salary that she blagged out of Riley Q. The reason Riley Q has given in is because she's trying to keep everyone happy. She's trying to keep her grandmother happy. She doesn't want the Presleys, the Presley bloodline, to get a bad name. You get what I'm saying to you guys? So... We then go back to the book again. Now we have a possibility now that Priscilla is writing another book. In fact, no, it's happening next year. Many fans are upset that she has announced that she's gonna also write a book. We all, obviously we all know in a few weeks we're gonna be getting Lisa Marie and Riley's book. Now, we've got high expectations. Obviously, we know about the Oprah and Riley Q interview. We've got high expectations about this book. We're not sure why Priscilla is not on the cover. Who knows what's on the inside cover? We've, been, had, a, we've had a few little bits of information um, of things that are in the book. Not much. So we're hoping that... Lisa Marie's book that was written with Riley. You know, Riley has helped. It came from the tapes of Lisa Marie. We're hoping that within that book, things will start to become wrongs to right, how it should have been. When Priscilla had the opportunity to put wrongs to right, she just took advantage of it. She took advantage of it and made Elvis's reputation and image even worse, harmed his legacy even more. Now we're hoping that Lisa Marie and Riley's book will start to change that and truly, truly start to put wrongs to right. We really, really hope that the interview with Oprah and Riley puts wrongs to right. This is what we want for Elvis. We want the world, the non-Elvis fans, as well as the Elvis fans and the Priscilla fans to start to understand that we have been tricked, we have been mugged off, we have been blagged, misled, brainwashed, 
We want the general public around the world to understand that the whole thing has been, sorry, it's a blooming fly mire, that the whole thing we have been duped for over 40 years. We want to be able to say to Joe Bloggs, you know, the public, we were right. We were right. Elvis was a decent man, was a good hearted Christian man, a beautiful, caring, charismatic, generous, kind man, a heart of gold. Everything negative that has been said about him for 40 years was bullshit. Now, just because Elvis had lots of girlfriends, so what? It doesn't make him a bad person. It, does it? Just because Elvis had a brief friendship with Priscilla in 1959 for six weeks doesn't make him a paedophile. Elvis was a very, very sick man. Doesn't make him a street drug addict. Doesn't mean he's on heroin. He took prescribed medication because he was chronically sick. We, ju we just want to not be embarrassed when we talk to people in the street, friends in the street. When we say, oh, I'm an Elvis fan, we don't want the dirty look. This is the problem I'm having with my Elvis channel. I've had a lot of success, I'm very lucky, with Team Elvis. Why should we have to talk to people and as soon as we mention that we're Elvis fans, they give you that dirty look. Oh, he was a paedophile. He died on the toilets. He binged on cheeseburgers. He was obsessed with sex. He was a sexaholic. How many people know that Elvis actually didn't really want to sleep with many, many of the women that he became close with? How many people know that? How many people know that Elvis was seriously sick and needed his medication? He had chronically, chronically bad health problems. And now it's coming out, there's a chance that he may have even had brain damage from an accident that caused inflammation throughout his body. How many people know that? Yeah? How many people know that Elvis refused to sleep with Priscilla until she was 22? How many people know that Elvis fulfilled every promise he made to Priscilla, marrying her May the 1st, I mean, sorry, in 1967. He fulfilled his promise, if the promise was ever made. We don't actually know, do we? Elvis always tried to do the right thing. That's why he married Priscilla. Elvis didn't want to get married. That's clear. Now, he may have loved her, I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Priscilla may have loved him, I don't know. But if we go by Priscilla's actions on how she treated him after 1968 when she was unfaithful with the dance instructor, Steve Peck, just after Lisa Marie was born, she couldn't have loved him. She could not have loved him if you go by her actions. And then she does it again in, 19, in uh, 1970 with Mike Stone, the karate champion, an acquaintance of Elvis. But then you go, then you look at her actions with the book Elvis and Me, which really the whole of that book makes Elvis look bad. These are the actions of someone that doesn't love Elvis. These are the actions of someone that's getting revenge. This is what I'm seeing. When I'm reading the book Elvis and Me, I'm seeing revenge. Guys, seriously, I'm seeing revenge. I'm like, Ha ha, I'm going to get you back. Ha, you're dead now. I can say whatever I want. Ha ha. You get it, guys? I'm getting, I'm getting Elvis back. He treated me horrible. When I moved to America when I was 18, when I moved to Graceland, and he had other girlfriends, and he might have been seeing Anne Margaret, his co-star, on Viva Las Vegas, yeah? Well, Elvis wasn't nice to me. He wasn't faithful. I'm going to get my revenge, da, 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 da. I'm going to write a book and make him look like a paedophile. You get what I'm saying, guys? It seems like revenge. I always say actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. 
And if you look at the actions of Priscilla, from the moment she walked out of Elvis's life with Mike Stone, with Lisa Marie, broke up Mike Stone's family, Francis Stone, who was pregnant and had a small girl. She even befriended Francis Stone, Mike Stone's wife. You look at her actions, guys. That's not the actions of a woman that was in love. She, even now, she says, he was the love of my life. She also says in interviews, I played it yesterday. Oh, I didn't um, divorce Elvis because I didn't love him. We just grew apart. I repeat, oh, I didn't divorce Elvis because I didn't love him. We just grew apart, yeah? But then you look at what she did to Elvis once they split up. Once she was out that door, which I think was around late 71, early 72, she was gone, yeah? With Mike Stone skipping down the road, knowing that she was going to get a lot of money, a lot. Knowing that Elvis was going to be desperate to see Lisa Marie, knowing that Elvis worshipped Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie was the golden goose. She was going to get whatever she wanted from Elvis because Lisa Marie was the most important thing in Elvis's life. This is all my opinions for entertainment purposes. My point is, guys, you look at Priscilla's actions. So she has the divorce. They agree many things, houses, cars, motorbikes. This is the first divorce. She gets on with her life. Tries a few business ventures, gives up the name Presley. Things don't really work out, do they? Then she, some, for some reason, she decides that she's going to go back for more money, a massive amount more. We don't know why. Was it Robert Kardashian, her boyfriend? Who knows why? Who knows? She decided she was going back. She was going to hammer him, but this time she wanted a fortune. I don't actually even know how much it was. Some say $725,000, some say it's $1.5 million, some say it was $3 million. Even the monthly spousal payments, the, 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 um, a percentage of the copy of his royalties, yeah? This time Priscilla was going for gold. She was going for gold this time, yeah? You look at her actions, guys. In 1977, when Elvis was nearly dead, chronically sick, the Memphis Mafia had released the tell-all book, Elvis, What Happened? And Elvis also um, was on extreme medication, prescribed medication, because he was so desperately ill, he didn't know which way to turn, and he was relying on his doctors to fix him, on his nurses to fix him, to soothe his pain, to soothe his discomfort. How many pills was he taking a day? 20, 30, 40 pills a day. Who knows? He was desperate. He just wanted to get well, guys. Serious inflammation, heart problems, liver problems, breathing problems, glycoma, twisted colon, constipation, and many more things. This man had become seriously sick and Priscilla knew it, in my opinion but she still demanded this horrific divorce settlement, accusing Elvis of fraud and lies so that the second divorce settlement would be allowed. A judge had to approve it, approve her, when she had to call him a liar to get an opening to be able to go for more money. So cruel, I can't think of anything more cruel. And we know that Elvis dies. Who knows why Elvis died? No one really knows if it was heart attack or not. No one really knows. He was sick. He was, he was, his days were numbered. We are gutted when we see the way he looked in those final concerts. We actually are brought to tears, aren't we? When he sings my way, it's hard to not get tearful. Now this is my point, guys. We go by Priscilla's actions. So then, Okay, Elvis has passed away. Then we see the way she behaved at the funeral. The way she tried to control the girlfriends. I think she was quite cruel. 
Then we have the way the Smiths were treated. Again, I think quite cruel. And then we move forward and she takes praise for saving Graceland and launching Graceland. Well, we've already proved that the plans were already in hand to create a living museum at Graceland. We know that. We don't know that Priscilla saved Graceland. What we do know is that she had a charge, a lien on the property, a deed of trust created to place a charge, a lien on the property. So she was like part owner. So once when Vernon was close to death, he had to make a decision whether or not she would be the main trustee of Graceland's. And really he didn't have a choice because she had a lien, a charge on the building. So when the bankers are all together making a decision on who's going to launch Graceland's, it had to be Priscilla. It couldn't be anyone else. So then Priscilla becomes the head of this vast empire, the Presley Empire. Priscilla Presley, Elvis's divorcee, who hammered him in a divorce, who was extremely cruel in how she was unfaithful to Elvis with Mike Stone and Steve Peck and other people it's possible, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes. This woman is sat on a mountaintop. She sat on a throne, the throne of Graceland's. Could you imagine how Elvis would feel? Could you seriously imagine if Elvis could see what had happened that after his father died, Vernon, she was handed everything. Everything was handed to her on a platter, on a plate. She was the, the Roman emperor of Graceland's, the queen of Graceland's, almighty power. Everything went through Priscilla. I bet she couldn't even believe it. I bet you Priscilla could not believe that she had managed to maneuver herself to this almighty, powerful position and then was see, seen around the world as the savior of Graceland's. The, the smart businesswoman that thought up the idea of the living museum, even though it wasn't her idea. It was not her idea and we've proved this look up Morgan Maxfield look up Vernon's dealings with Memphis City even Colonel Tom Parker was pushing for a living museum it was not Priscilla's idea but she takes all the credit for it she takes all the credit for it seriously guys the whole world has been conned in my in my opinion, for entertainment purposes, the world has been conned. We've been scammed, guys. We've been scammed. And then we carry on watching her behavior towards Riley Keough, towards her daughter. I could spend an hour talking about the disagreement Lisa Marie had with her mother. I could spend an hour talking about the financial disagreements she's had with Riley Q. I have strong opinions about how Priscilla is parading herself right now as we speak on how she makes money. She's so ambitious. What about the grandkids? What about Finley and Harper? You get what I'm saying guys? I, I, I have to repeat this. I am not a Priscilla hate person. I don't hate Priscilla. I don't hate, I don't want to create hate. I want an apology. I want Priscilla to come to the table, admit the wrongdoing, clear Elvis's name. Clear Elvis's name. We want Elvis's name cleared. We want the book Elvis and Me retracted. We want the 1985 book Elvis and Me retracted. We want it to be rewritten as the truth. Now, Priscilla has an opportunity to write another book that's coming out next year. We want you, Priscilla, to rewrite Elvis and me and now finally put wrongs to right. You have an opportunity, Priscilla Presley, you have an opportunity to put wrongs to right this time. Part two, Elvis and me, part two. 
Will you do the right thing? Will you apologize to Elvis? Will you apologize to Riley, to the twins? You, t you literally have taken money out of their pocket. Every penny that Riley Q gave you in the agreement that a judge had to approve was money out of their pocket. Are they 15 years old and you took money out of their pocket? Every penny that came out of that trust that you took, the million dollars, the yearly salary, the 400,000 um, legal fees, was their money, was the twins' money, was Finley and Harper's money. You took it out of their pocket. You took it out of Riley Q's pocket. I mean, I, I have to say that to take money out of your grandkids' pocket, you must be ashamed of that. You owe them all an apology. You digged your heels in and you tried to get your pound of flesh, even wanting to be a joint trustee with Riley. That's terrible. How can you be a joint trustee with Riley when it was... Lisa Marie wasn't your mother. A mother dies, she gives her belongings to her children and that's what Lisa Marie always wanted. Lisa Marie always wanted her belongings given to her children, but you stepped in, you wanted to share it. The whole world had to watch how you were treating Riley and the twins and then watch them give you money. And then you demand to be buried next to Elvis. Even though you were not his widow, even though you were divorced, even though all the horrible circumstances that led up to you and him separating and the way you treated him after you separated, but you say you want to be buried next to Elvis. Who gets buried next to their ex-husband? Come on, we're not stupid. Why do you think the general public are so stupid? Nobody gets buried next to their ex-husband, nobody. Who, who spends 30 to 40 years saying that their ex-husband was the love of their life? Bearing in mind all the different relationships that you have had. Who does that? It's unheard of. I don't know of anyone that got buried next to their ex-husband. It just doesn't make sense. It's ridiculous. And then to sit on different interviews, even with Piers Morgan, and keep saying, he was the love of my life. He was the love of my life. Come on. We're not stupid. We are not stupid. I ask you now, yeah? Louis, on defending Elvis Presley, on behalf of Team Elvis, on behalf of the fans around the world, please apologize to the fans. Please. Please apologize to Elvis. Apologize to Finley and Harper and Riley. Put wrongs to right, finally. This is your opportunity to put wrongs to right. I don't hate you. You've made a lot of mistakes. I know Elvis was no angel. I get it. Elvis was no angel. He made mistakes. He wasn't very kind to you when you first moved to Graceland because he had other girlfriends because he saw himself as a single man. I get it. But you've got your revenge. Your revenge has gone too far. And you've got away with it for decades, 40 years of revenge. It just ain't right, Priscilla. We're not falling for it, are we? We're not falling for the, he's the love of my life. No one's falling for it. I think that's it, guys. So, quite an emotional dog walk and strong opinions. Please remember, no hate. Natalie, that doesn't help us. That doesn't help us. We have to believe that it's possible. We have to believe it's possible. That's how things get done. We have to have hope and faith. And I got a lot of it, bags of it. I believe that we may get an apology. I honestly do. I believe that it's possible. And I tell you now, guys, if we get this apology from Priscilla, everything will change everything. Elvis's memory, his legacy, his image, his reputation will change because finally the public will see Elvis for what they should see him. The doubt in people's mind will clear. The doubt, there's always doubt, isn't there? You talk to anybody, it's like, oh yeah, Elvis, that guy. Yeah, too much doubt. We need truth. 
And as soon as, a, as Priscilla apologizes, it's the beginning of the truth. And then we'll see the books that follow. Maybe a good movie will be made that shows the real Elvis, shows the truth. Because we haven't had one yet, guys. We haven't had a movie that shows the truth. It hasn't happened yet. This was Sophia Coppola's mistake. Sophia Coppola had an opportunity to do a very successful movie, but instead she just copied an old, a 40-year-old story that no one's interested in. They've heard it too many times. So Sophia Coppola messed up. It was a massive business mistake for Sophia Coppola to just copy the old story of Elvis and me. She wanted Priscilla's backing and to get Priscilla's backing, she had to agree, in my opinion, to copy the story in Elvis and me. So she, Priscilla, um, Sophia Coppola made a movie based on lies, in my opinion. No one's interested in lies. People want the truth, they want something different. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to go. We've just done 52 minutes of walking. I'm tired. I've quite enjoyed this, quite emotional, a bit upsetting. So if you've enjoyed what I've done, please buy us a coffee, hit the coffee button, send us a super. You can PayPal me to my email address. And it's, it's really nice when you guys give me a thank you. It means everything to me. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning, guys. I look forward. And in the morning, we're going to have a brand new topic. Take care, guys. Got to go. Love to all of you.